And for an example of how robotics has the potential to change lives, we hear Mark Pollock's inspiring story. Mark went blind at the age of 22, but his thirst for life didn't go dark. He raised thousands for charity by taking part in ultra-endurance racing. But then in 2010, he sustained a fall that left him paralysed. Now he's determined to walk again and has been a fierce proponent of robotics to help people like himself realise that dream. Mark, you've had an extraordinary life so far. You lost your sight when you were 22 years old and in 2010 you fell out of a building and became paralysed. Most human beings would be completely defeated, but not you. You've achieved so much since then. How have you retained such positivity? I think if I go right back, I had a background in sport and I think my desire to compete has been the common thread that has run through before I was blind, after I was blind and now after I'm paralysed. It's just my sports keep changing. It was rowing, then it was adventure racing and endurance racing, racing to the South Pole. And now my new expedition is to try and find a cure for paralysis. Within that, we're looking at technology now that can help perhaps cure or help along the way and there's something dubbed bionic trousers mm. uh, tell us about how it's working for you yeah well you know the reality right now in the whole of human history there has been no cure no treatments no therapies for paralysis so that's the starting point uh, a 100 percent failure rate but accepting that as a starting point i think it's also worthwhile to run hope in parallel with that and this whole area of uh, robotics, electrical stimulation, pharmacology, biological interventions, collaborating and bringing all of these wonderful scientists and technologists from around the world together provides great hope and some meaningful results. So yeah, I've got a set of robotic legs, uh, bionic trousers, and I can stand and walk and I've done over 400,000 steps in the last couple of years. It's amazing the advance in technology. Do you know or can you foresee where it can go even further? Yeah, well, I, I debated uh, in my own head and with, with other people about what direction this stuff might go in because I, I believe today we probably have the technology and the brains in the world to make a robot that could be a pretty decent alternative to a wheelchair or at least get people standing and walking uh, fairly independently. But there's no better machine than the human body. So what I'm particularly interested in is a robot being a short-term part of a cocktail of cures. Um, I don't want to walk around in a robot and I don't think many people do. I want, to, I want to use a robot and eventually get out of it with the human body taking over. And Mark, when you use your robotic legs and you were explaining to me before, how does it make you feel? What's the difference to you personally? Well, I, you know, literally, you're on a different level in the world when you're sitting down in a wheelchair and just from very basic uh, social interaction, you know, a lot of the time you're out and about people are standing and as a wheelchair user you're lower than everyone so it's just that psychological social impact on that eats away perhaps at your confidence uh, how you're seen in the world how you feel about yourself so to stand and to walk even for the the one hour a day that I get a chance to do it uh, it just makes you feel normal uh, whatever normal is, but normal for human beings, as we've evolved, is standing and walking and looking people in the eye, even though I can't see. It's important. It's important to be on the same level, and I get a chance to do that. But I want to. I want a chance to do it more, and I want a chance for my nervous system to uh, kick back into gear. Mark, thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you.